Good afternoon and welcome to Healthy Cooking with Chris. Uh, you are here for our Let's Make Chili Black and White class, so you are in the correct place. We are recording today's session, so if you um, would like to leave your camera off, we understand completely, but otherwise we would love to see your smiling face. We do request that you stay on mute though, unless you have something urgent that we need to talk about. Um, if we do, you can also use the chat box. So if you wiggle your mouse at the bottom of your screen, you'll see the chat box. That's how you can reach us. I do monitor that as we're going through class. So if you have any burning questions, that's the place to put them in. If you have any issues though, other than that, that can't be solved or you have some technical issues, feel free to email me at amynichols at areaagencyonaging.org. Um, I monitor that while we're going along too, so don't worry. If we are hacked or Zoom bombed as they call it in the business, um, you will know it immediately because it's loud and bright and, and naughty, very, very naughty. Um, we will end this session and pick that up again on another day. So do not worry if that happens and all of a sudden your screen goes blank. So let's talk about what's happening today. So my name is Amy Nichols. I am the campus coordinator, the Campus for Creative Aging, which is a division of Region 4 Area Agency on Aging. Um, the campus is a very cool physical location. Unfortunately, it is closed right now due to the virus. Um, so we are, um, the campus mission is to make aging creative and fun and, and entertaining too. And um, so we had, to, we had to pivot a little bit and now we do our education via Zoom, so welcome. If you're not familiar with Zoom, just hang out there and I'll help you along. Um, we're very excited about that. We also um, would like to tell you about our, our host S hostesses? I don't know what the plural is, but we have two chefs today. <laughs> How's that? Um, Chris Flood um, is our first chef that is joining us, and she is waving her hand. Very good. She is the health education supervisor of the Community Health Equity and Inclusion Department of the Bronson Wellness Center. So um, her job is to educate, and, um, and she loves to, to cook, and she's I call her a chef, she gets mad when I call her that, but it's true. And then also with her, uh, with us today, is her um, her employee cohort uh, right hand, I don't know, you have so many names, Isabel, um, Isabel Hinton, um, who does nutrition education as well. So we are going to, the three of us are here today to kind of uh, go along and teach you how things are gonna go. Um, to t they're gonna talk all about chili. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sit back and relax and chit chat. So with further ado, I'm gonna pass this over to Miss Chris Flood. You are okay. On okay. Um. Oh, and I'm spotlighted now. I can see myself. Perfect. Well, welcome everybody. I'm super glad you're here. As Amy said, I love to cook. No, I am not a chef. I'm a I'm a home cook, and I love to cook. I love to cook detailed recipes, but I also love to cook really super simple recipes and foods that are healthy. And that's what we're going to do today. Now, I know everybody has a favorite chili recipe. Sometimes people have chilies that sit and simmer for hours. And sometimes people make chilies that you can make in 30 minutes. And that's what Isabel and I are presenting today. I think Isabel simmers a little bit longer. We'll switch to her in a few minutes. And mine is really a 20 minute healthy sweet potato chili. So, so it's kind of funny. I was thinking about this because last week we did a sheet pan shrimp fajita. And so we're really hitting hard on the sort of Southwest flavors, it seems like this month, which is great for the cold weather, right? But we're going to shift soon to some new things, which we can tell you about later on in the program that we've got coming up. So let's start on our sweet potato chili. So this recipe today um, I'm going to tell you as we walk through the recipe, and you should have that from Amy. If you don't, type her a message in the chat and let her know that you do not have the two recipes for today. Um, and as we go through the recipe, we'll talk through the ingredients, why they're healthy for you, and where you could make additions or substitutions to fit any special needs or special diets that you might have. So let's get started. So I have all of my ingredients in front of me today, and there's not very many. I've even got a couple of extras that I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, as we get going here. So my step one in my recipe is to just heat a little bit of oil and get some onion and pepper softening. So I already chopped my 
onions because I figured you guys didn't need to see that. And I did want to mention though that one onion about this size that can fit into the palm of your hand is probably going to give you about a half to three quarters cup of diced onion. So you're wondering if when a recipe says, hmm, how much is a half cup chopped onion? It's about one small to medium, medium onion, not the real big guys, right? Um, so, so that's what I did. So I already have this pre-chopped. Um, I'm going to chop my green pepper. Now, um, before we go, I said I was gonna talk about the nutrition part. So onions are alliums, right? And alliums have a lot of antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties. So super healthy, could be green onions, red onions, purple onions, um, garlic, any of those um, types of vegetables are really good for you for inflammation um, and other things. So, so while they're sitting on the side, I'm gonna move this out of the way just for a second. I'm using just a standard green bell pepper. It's already been washed, so have my hands. And I am just going to cut the top off. We did this last week, if any of you were here, spin it around, cut the bottom off. I'm gonna save this. We don't wanna throw this out or compost this. This is edible and good for us. And this little guy is too. Um, and so this recipe calls for about a half of a um, green pepper. So I'm really only gonna take two sides, two sides of it for this recipe. And I'm gonna save the other part for later. Now, the recipe today serves two people a nice hearty bowl of chili about three times. So, so that's what we're gonna come up with. If you want to make it bigger, you could double the recipe. It's a really forgiving recipe. So. Hang on while I pour my oil and start getting that hot. And Amy, do you have any questions for the group? I do have a few questions for the group. I actually have some of these fun things called poll questions. So we're gonna play with this a little bit. Um, some of you from Area Agency Foster Program, um, you may not be able to do these, we're gonna try. Um, so bear with me. What we have are poll questions, and this question is gonna pop up on your screen, and then you're going to pick the answer that best suits you. And by the way, these are all anonymous. We do not track who says what, so there's no right or wrong answers. This is just what you really think. That's what we really want to know. So here's what we really want to know today. Are you spicy or aren't you? So um, how do you like your chili? Mild, medium, hot, or blistering? Um, and you know, like I said, there's no right or wrong answer. You just click on the one you like and hit submit, and hopefully it works. All righty, I think we're almost there. Couple more, great. So here we go. Let's see if we got a, a, a spicy or not crowd. Chris, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Looks like, looks like we have most people are medium. Our 44% of us are medium. We've got some 19% of you people are spicy, which is nice, hot. And then the rest of you are there with me in the mild department. <laughs> oh, that's really good. Um, I'm a hot, but my husband is a mild. So we try to go somewhere in between. Um, so I've got my oil, which is hot. I hear it sizzling in the back. That's because I didn't dry the pot. There's a little water in there. Hang on a minute. And I am going to put my onion and my green pepper in, and then we're gonna get talking about um, sweet potatoes. So give me a minute to just toss these in. I'm gonna turn my back to you for just a second. You can hear those, right? I hope. Yeah. This is where I wish we could smell, because I love the smell of onions and green peppers frying together. <laughs> I do too. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna move them to my to my simmer burner so they don't the oh, smoke alarm doesn't go off like it did the one time. Yes, we um, have to have the smoke alarm go off, folks. For you, <laughs> <put that. laughs> so, so I've got my green pepper, which is loaded with vitamin C, really low calorie, decent source of fiber, and my onion in the pot with a little bit of oil. Just gonna saute that till it's tender. Now, um, my, my next step is gonna be that I'm gonna add minced garlic. And for those of you that have been with me for several of these classes, you know I always use fresh garlic. But today, I'm not. I'm gonna use garlic powder because you can. And I really like people to know that they can mix things up. You could use garlic powder, minced fresh garlic, jarred garlic, squeezed garlic, whatever you have. So we're gonna hang on to that and put that in in a minute. We're gonna follow that by one can of diced tomatoes with green chilies in them. Now, if you buy the Rotel brand, they're pretty hot and spicy. This, this brand from Aldi is not very spicy. So we're gonna add a can of that. 
and then we're also with the juices and then we're going to add sweet potato which is really the star of the show so let's talk about that why sweet potato sweet potato and i've got mine diced up so we can have a little chat session and i wouldn't get distracted so sweet potato is super high in fiber and very high in vitamin a decent source of vitamin c and really a nice hearty vegetable that we don't get enough of we generally don't eat enough of the orange veggies um you could substitute carrots you could substitute other kinds of squash so i brought a couple others and today i have if anybody has ever seen this little guy before this is called the honey nut squash and you don't see these often in the grocery store but you do see them at farm markets what's super cool about these is it looks like a butternut squash right but it's smaller you do not need to peel it. You do need to get the seeds out of it, but you do not need to peel it to use it. So if I wanted to use this little baby, I would just poke a few holes in it, microwave it for one to three minutes, soften it a little bit so I could cut it in half without killing myself, scoop out the seeds, and then cut the whole thing up. You can eat the seeds. So this is a great one to try. I also have another kind of squash you might see at the farm market in the summer. This is called a coconut squash. Same deal with this one. You can actually eat the skin on it. Um, so if you ever see these at the farm market, give them a try. Um, I had sweet potato, so that's what we're using. And I have actually a white sweet potato and an orange sweet potato. And the white sweet potato looks red on the outside, but is actually white on the inside. Still a good source of fiber, still a good source of vitamin A and C. So we've got a combination of orange sweet potatoes and white sweet potatoes already diced and cubed. Now, do you have to peel them? You do not have to peel them. I peeled mine because my vegetables I got from my daughter, and I, you guys heard last week if you were here, uh, works on a farm in um, New York, uh, and she brought home some beautiful vegetables, including both of these squashes and these sweet potatoes. But she brought them home the day before Thanksgiving. They've been sitting in our cool garage. Um, but they had a few pock marks on them and some blemishes. So I just peeled them to, to get rid of most of that. But you don't have to. You can just scrub your potatoes and use it peel and all. Um, so I'm going to throw into my pot my garlic powder, my tomatoes with the juice, my sweet potato. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about spices. So while I throw those three ingredients in, Amy, do you have another question for the group? Well, I actually have two questions. One question from me and one from the crowd. So I'm going to punt just a little bit here. Um, so can you use any kind of squash as long as it is more of a drier squash and not really a wet kind of watery squash for this? Yes. So I think the quick, so you could use acorn squash. You could use regular butternut squash. You could use carrots. You could use sweet potatoes, probably not zucchini, although I don't know why it would, I mean, it would, wouldn't taste bad. It would just be more wet. Um, yeah, I, all the drier squash and you can also excuse me, use this, buy the squash that's already pre-cut and cubed for you at the grocery store. No shame in that. It's still got the nutrients. So if you don't like cutting big squash, you don't have to. So let me dump these two ingredients in, my diced chilies with juice and my sweet potatoes and my broth, which we'll talk about in a minute and then come back. Um, okay. Amy, have you got another question? I do have one other question for you. What's the difference in taste between that, those lovely red sweet potatoes and your yellow sweet potatoes? Is there? Okay, I turned around and I couldn't hear the whole question. What's the oh, difference is between? There, yeah, is there much difference in taste between your red sweet potato and your yellow sweet potato? I don't know. That I, I think there's, red. Oh, yes, so there's, there, it, the yellow or the white, the one that's red, it does taste like a sweet potato. You're going to get that sweet flavor. Um, but to me, it's not quite as sweet as the orange sweet potatoes. We, we put this in a, um, a recipe that called for a regular white potato over the holidays. We were making something. We didn't have any white potatoes. And we definitely noticed that it was, def it was sweeter. It had much sweeter flavor. But you could interchange them, definitely. OK, and one more question from the crowd. Yeah. Do you want those onions soft or brown before you add the other ingredients? Because this is a quicker chili. Do you need them yeah. cooked? I do get them a little bit soft. If, but if you want to dump, you could dump this recipe all together. But I softened them just a little bit, but you, you don't have to. Um, 
the other thing you can do with this recipe, which I'll talk about at the end when we come back, is you can make it in an instant pot if anybody has an instant pot very quickly. And I'll go through those directions because we actually made this in the instant pot once, which was a three minute cook, um, which was super easy if you have an instant pot. So, so I, I got my onions, pepper, on, my um, onions, pepper, my tomatoes with the juices and the chilies, and I'm adding my garlic and spices to my pot. And then we're gonna let everything simmer. So let me show you before I put the spices in, what I've got for spices. So, and we'll talk about if you don't have these in your cupboard. Again, we're using garlic powder today, just for mix it up. I'm using basic chili powder, but I could use chipotle chili powder if I wanted to. Um, that's a little bit smokier and a little hotter. I also have Mexican hot chili powder, going for mild today. Um, I also have cayenne pepper, that is spicy. If you were one of those people that checked mild, Maybe you want to skip this. And I also have ground cumin or cumin. I don't know if everybody says it a little bit different. That's not spicy. It just has an earthy, deep flavor. And our secret ingredient of the day is some cinnamon that we're going to add. So um, I am going to add all those things. You'll see in your recipe that a lot of times I'll say like one to two teaspoons. It really depends on how spicy you like things. So my suggestion is add your spices. When you get to that tasting point in step five, when you stir in the beans, if it's not spicy enough, add some more because you can't take it out. So I'm going to add on the lower side of these spices, knowing that my family likes it a little spicier, at least I do, and I'll put more in at the end. So I'm going to turn my back on you to add those. Um, Amy, do you have another question while I'm doing that? I do have a poll question ready. So let me pop up another poll question, get it ready to go. Um, so this is in the afternoon, but, and we happen to be where, where we're at is, um, is winter here. So, but we want to know what the best time to eat chili is. Summer, fall, winter, spring, or any time. And we can thank Miss Isabel for writing these questions for me today. She really helped me out. Sometimes I write these. And, and sometimes she writes these and today was Isabel's, she was, she wrote all these. So I, and I'm going to ask what her question was when she, it's her turn to, um, to cook for us today. I want to know what, what her favorite time to have chili is. So, all right, just a couple more seconds while we finish. And um, here we go. We're going to end that polling. So it looks like everybody agrees with, they're split between any time in winter, Chris. <clears throat> and ah, some say a little fall. So there I'm any time. I'm in any time for sure. Um, I, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm in any time. Um, so, and it's winter, and it, which is the best time for a lot of people. Um, one thing I want to add, talk about before we go over to Isabel, which we're going to do in just a few minutes, is we. Um, I think Amy told you there was a correction, couple corrections that needed to be made on your recipes. Amy, did you send those out? I have, yeah. Okay, so here's what Amy did. Okay. Amy resaved the, the corrected copy, um, but it didn't, and sent the wrong copy again. So after we get off of here, you're going to get the corrected copy that will actually have the cayenne pepper in the recipe, um, which is what one of the things we forgot. So you kind of have a guideline right now. You don't actually have the full recipes, but you right. will when I get done here. And thank you, Amy, because another thing that I noticed was in this step three, add the garlic, tomatoes, juices, diced sweet potato, and spices. Nowhere did it say add the broth. So you guys are probably going like, what are they doing? We are adding two cups of vegetable broth. That's what I just measured and put in. We'll make that correction on your recipe. Um, I also did the nutrition analysis for the recipe, Amy, before you got that. So I will send that to you. So when you go to send it out, you can add the nutrition analysis, which I'll talk about when we serve this up at the end. Because a lot of times people want to know, um, like, you know, those kind of things, the calories, the fat, the carbs, and all of that. So, so I'm at my step four, where, where everything is in, and all we're going to do now is just wait for those sweet potatoes to get tender. And if you get them to about the size of a dice or a die, they're going to simmer and be tender enough to eat in 15 to 20 minutes. If you don't like them al dente, 
just let it go longer. If you let it go even longer, you can totally obliterate it and you'll have a creamy sweet potato chili. So, so think about your taste and texture preference um, and cook it as long as you want. But we're gonna go about 15 minutes. So what I'm gonna do now is turn this over to Isabel. I'm gonna turn off my camera. Isabel's gonna start on her recipe and then we'll come back. And right, thank awesome. you, any, any questions? No, but while I um, unpin you here or cancel the spotlight, I wanted to make a comment about vegetable stock that if you have not tried vegetable stock, please do. I always bought chicken stock or beef stock because I'm a snob, right? <laughs> and that's all I like. And I have now become a, a total convert to vegetable stock. It has as much flavor and without, it, without having as many calories and fat, and it's just really, really delicious. So. It's my plug yep, for it. Good stuff. addition, Amy. And the one that I bought is the True Goodness Meyer Organic Vegetable Stock, which is also gluten-free. And that's what we're using today. You can buy low sodium. This was not. And we'll talk about sodium when we come back and we talk about the beans. But for now, I'll turn you over to Isabel. Awesome. All right. Can you guys hear me okay? We can hear you. All right. Hi, everybody. So I am going to be doing um, a black bean chili today with some ground turkey. And it's pretty much a dump recipe. Now, I prepped all my ingredients ahead of time because I am a super slow chopper. Chris is so fast at cutting her vegetables, and I am so slow at cutting my vegetables. So I didn't think you'd want to sit on here while you watch me cut for like half an hour. So I'm trying to get better at it. <laughs> so what I have here, the first thing you want to get is a large pot. And the reason you want a large pot is because there's going to be quite a bit of liquid and delicious ingredients in here and you don't want your pot overflowing. So I have my large pot here and I'm just going to turn my little burner on um, to medium here and then drizzle on a little bit of oil um, just to kind of get the bottom of the pan a little bit nice and, you know, greased up with this oil. Are you using olive oil today there, my friend? I am using olive oil today. I'm using the true goodness olive oil, which I love the taste of olive oil. You can use any oil you have at home, though. You could use, uh, you know, veg vegetable oil, avocado oil, you know, whatever you have. With this recipe, I like the taste of the olive oil with it. It adds a nice flavor. So now what I'm going to do is let that um, oil heat up for just a second. And then I'm going to go ahead and I am going to add my ground turkey. Now, it's kind of funny um, that you were saying, Amy, earlier that you wished you could smell everything that was cooking. But what's interesting is when, cook, when Chris is cooking her chili, I feel like I can smell it because I have all my ingredients prepped. And so I smell the onions and the peppers and everything. So it's kind of like, you know, a weird, <laughs> weird thing. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> so now I'm just going to go ahead and dump my ground turkey into my pot. I got a little bit on my hands, so I'm gonna wash my hands really quick. Do we have any questions or anything um, in the chat? Nope, so far so good. Um, my question to you is why ground turkey versus ground beef? So you can use ground turkey or ground beef. Um, ground turkey is what I had, um, but I do like how this ground turkey is lean ground turkey. I got the 93.7. Um, so when you make this, uh, using a lean ground turkey has, um, or having, using a lean ground meat is good. It has less um, saturated fat it and it's just tasty. So if you don't like the taste of ground turkey, which some people don't, you could easily replace it with, um, you know, a lean beef. You could replace it with a uh, lean venison. I don't know. I've never had, I don't really like venison. Um, <laughs> but if that's what you like, you know, you could use that in the recipe. So kind of whatever you have. That's the cool thing about chili is it's very, very forgiving. So now it is starting to cook just a little bit. And so now I'm going to break apart my meat just to make it cook a little bit quicker and faster so you guys don't have to wait so long while it browns. And I am using this super cool tool. You don't have to use any special tools. You could just use a spatula to break up the meat as it grounds. You could use a wooden spoon. But I have this really cool tool um, that like breaks apart the, I don't know if you can see, but it like breaks apart the meat. It's got like four, four little edges to it. <laughs> so pretty cool. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to add the 
um, spices onto my ground turkey as well. So I've got some salt and pepper that I'm just gonna sprinkle on here. And I also have some ground cumin. So this is a teaspoon of ground cumin. Again, if you like, if you like the taste of cumin, you could add more, you could add less, just like Chris was saying. <laughs> a tablespoon of smoked paprika. So if you don't have smoked paprika, regular paprika works just as fine, but the smoked papri paprika adds a really nice deep flavor, I think, to this chili. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add that right in there as well. Yeah, I agree, the smoky, that just little bit of smoky is not, it's like you can't quite figure out what the difference is, but it's that definitely makes a, a, a market improvement on your recipes when you have a little smoke in there. It really does. And especially with chili because, you know, it's kind of got smoky flavors anyway. And so adding the smoked paprika just adds a really, really nice flavor profile to that. And then finally, this is actually not in your recipe because this is just something I like to add every now and then. This is not like a necessary ingredient you have to add, but I have here some garlic powder and some onion powder, um, just kind of a mix of a few little things. And I'm just gonna sprinkle that on there as well because I really, really love the taste of onion and garlic. So I'm gonna add that to it as well. And note that you are using the powder, not garlic salt and onion salt, because that's a really fast way to add sodium to recipes. When you're trying yeah. to watch your sodium, you gotta be very careful about those, right? Thank you for bringing that up, Amy. That is so true. And um, with this recipe too, I am actually also going to be adding um, some like, uh, not fresh garlic, it's minced garlic from a jar because that's what I had at home. But I'm also gonna be adding some of that garlic as well to kind of give another um, nice little flavor. So Amy, while this is browning, cause it's gonna take a, a, a few minutes to brown, um, would you like to pull up our game for today? I would. We have one one quick comment though from our uh, our friend Elaine. Have you wants to know if you've tried using cumin seeds because the cumin seeds are uh, in your chili are uh, and I have Elaine and it's really cool. It adds just a little like a little pop of crunch. It's no. Wow, no. I have never tried that, but that sounds really good. I should give that a I should give that a try. I am all for trying different types of chilies and trying different variations of chili. I, I love doing that. This is one of our favorite, favorite things to make. What a nice segue you just gave me, by the way, to different variations of chili. <laughs> All right. Well, she finishes that. I'm going to share my screen here, folks, so you can see that we are um, going to, can you see my game? Thumbs up if you can see where it says the great chili show up, show down. Everybody can see it. Yeah. Nod. Okay. Cool. All right. Now, this is, we always have a game because we're goofy and we like to play games, but this one is kind of fun. So it, this is a question and answer, and you can answer in the chat or answer in your head. Again, no judgment. Um, the question. So here's the first question. This chili is always served on noodles. Is it Cincinnati chili, New York chili, Birmingham chili, or Douglas chili? So if you think you know, Oh, I see some answers in the chat already. And Cincinnati it is. And yes, Karen, you don't have to spell it because I couldn't spell it either. <laughs> but yes, it is Cincinnati chili, correct. Um, and it does look delicious, doesn't it? All right, next one. What ingredient does Texas chili omit? What doesn't it have in it? Is it chili peppers, beans, chili powder, or beef? Chili peppers, beans, chili powder, or beef? And beans it is. You guys are so smart. Correct. Um, so y'all that have been with us a while know that I'm allergic to tomatoes too. My friend Clark just made me Texas chili without tomatoes and beans. And oh my gosh, it was so delicious. Like I would have never known that, that it was missing both. So if you have any kind of those issues, Oh, if you put beans in it, it's called gringo chili. Thank you, Trish, for that. <laughs> As we are. Okay. And this is what it looks like. This is the Texas chili. So you can see what it looks like. And that's what mine looked like, too. It was delicious. Chili verde is most often made with this meat. Is it beef, pork, turkey, or carne asada? 
beef, pork, turkey, or carne asada? Um, again, I should do. Um, I have one, one guess in carne asada. That is not correct. It is act turkey. Nope. But Sharon got it right. It is pork. You are correct. <laughs> nice job. Pork is what is in carne asada most. This one I had to look up because I didn't believe Isabel's answer. So I did Google this. Um, this chili adds in chocolate and coffee for a deeper flavor. Is it Brazilian chili, Appalachian chili, Willy Wonka chili, or Rocky Mountain chili? <laughs> I like the answers on this one too, Isabel, by the way, they're great. <laughs> Brazilian, Appalachian, Willy Wonka, or Rocky Mountain? All right, mole is, um, mole is, is not a chili, but a sauce. So that's the difference on that one, you guys, that guessed mole. Smart, you know, you're, you know that mole has chocolate in it, but this one has chocolate and coffee, which makes it Rocky Mountain chili. So now I think I need to go on a trip, travel to the Rocky Mountains and figure out and try some chili. All right, this chili does not include tomatoes. This is another good chili for Amy. Havana, Springfield, Niente Pomodori chili. You're killing me with these names, Isabel. You know I can't pronounce. <laughs> or chili carne. So Havana, Springfield, Niente Pomodori chili, or chili carne. And this is what it looks like. Chili carne, chili carne. Karen says chili carne. Actually not. It is Springfield chili. And I'm assuming this is in like Springfield in the area of Springfield, Missouri, that kind of thing. So this chili is extra spicy. So if you are one of those people that answered hot, this is where you want to go. This is the kind of chili you want. Do you want snappy chili? Porubsky, P-O-R-U-B-S-K-Y chili? New Orleans style chili or Charlotte? style chili. Snappy, Perubsky, New Orleans, or Charlotte? And I already kind of gave away part of the answer on this one. No guesses? All right. This one is actually New Orleans. So think of that Cajun spice. I'm, I'm thinking there's some Cajun spices in that chili, and that's what makes it spicy. So what is the unique ingredient in Caribbean chili? Is it mango, pineapple, coconut, or dried banana? Mango, pineapple, coconut, or dried bananas? Ooh, mango and pineapple are our guesses. And mango it is. So all of you that guessed mango, you are correct. It is mango look at that isn't that beautiful it is beautiful all right well thank you for playing along with us that was fun i'm going to stop my sharing and go back over to our friend isabel as soon as i can get my mouse to cooperate there we go all right miss isabel how's that meat coming it is going well and actually while you guys are finishing up the game i did have to add one ingredient because in this recipe, you add the two tablespoons of tomato paste before the turkey is, com or the ground meat is completely cooked. And so um, you just add it, you know, in there. So I just added it in about 30 seconds ago and it was two tablespoons of tomato paste. So I just wanted to keep you guys updated on that. Now one thing, um, so that's simmering for a second. Now one thing that's really interesting is actually the Springfield um, chili, I was reading an article that said that the Springfield chili is actually spelled C-H-I-L-L-I. So apparently in Springfield, um, where this chili was made, there was a, um, like a typo or a mistake. They're not quite sure where it came from, but everywhere in Springfield, they um, describe, or they write chili as C-H-I-L-L-I. -L -L so that was just an interesting fact that I found. <laughs> so, That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so that has simmered a little while. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the onions and peppers to this. So 
I have chopped onion here, and I also have chopped sweet peppers. They are beautiful, um, tons of different colors. We've got red, orange, and yellow peppers with the onion. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna dump this in there. Nice, beautiful colors, delicious smelling smells. And I'm gonna let that simmer for a minute. So while that's simmering for one minute, Amy, do you wanna do um, a chat question? Sure, and I do have a little comment though, if I may. Oh, yeah. uh, about when you're using that tomato paste, uh, the tomato paste, the reason you are cooking it um, along with that meat is so that you can get it on the bottom of the pan and get it to caramelize a little bit because tomatoes are very, very um, easy to, to caramelize and it just brings out a whole nother depth of flavor. That's what it's there for. Well, that right. is so because I always followed this recipe and I never knew why I did that. So thank you for sharing. <laughs> And most recipes that will have just that little bit of tomato are, are actually probably okay for people like me that are tomato insensitive too as well. Now when you add that big thing of tomatoes, not so much, but um, just that little bit kind of cooks it off and caramelizes it and changes it up a little bit. So, all right, here's our question. When a warm meal, so what is, what warm meal do you like the best? Do you like chili? Do you like soup? Do you like stew? I should have said all of the above, Isabel. I don't know why I didn't add all of the above. <laughs> I feel like that would have been a popular answer. Do you like chili or soup or stew? And I think that this one might be, um, might preclude um, some ideas for some future classes, just if, if that was your, your answer. All right, here we go. I'm gonna end our polling. And boy, it is um, kind of a toss up here, you guys. So 13 people say stew, 10 say chili. Um, so I, I feel like stew might be one of our next classes. What do you think? That sounds awesome. Oh my gosh. Well, uh, what's really interesting, I put that up there because when I was a child, I used to hate chili. And um, when my mom would make it, I was a, I was a little meanie little girl. <laughs> I used to throw a huge fit when she would make the chili for us. And I would just, I would refuse to eat her chili that she worked so long and so hard on, but I just would throw off it. And then um, as I got older, my taste would change and I started to like it. And now I absolutely love chili. It's in our like rotation that we do, you know, our, our monthly or our weekly rotations of food. So chili is definitely a, a favorite of mine now. So, all right, so the, the peppers and the onions and the meat and the spices and the tomato paste are all nice and combined in this pot. So now comes the last little bit of this before you just wait for the rest of your dinner. So now we're just gonna add the garlic. Again, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. I love the taste of garlic, but if you're good with just the, with just the you know, garlic powder, that is totally fine. Let that sit for a few seconds. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to add the crushed tomatoes, the black beans, and the corn, and the beef broth. And then all you have to do is let it boil for five minutes and then let it simmer for two to three hours and then your dinner is on the table. So that's, that's why I love this recipe because it's a dump recipe. It's super fast and super quick. So I'm now gonna add my black beans and corn. And I rinsed both my black beans and corn. By doing so, you reduce the sodium content in canned beans and canned corn by 30%. So if you are watching your sodium intake like most of us, then that's a great way to help out there. I'm gonna add my, cr my crushed tomatoes. Nice little sauce there. Then my last little bit is my beef broth. And so I'm gonna go ahead and add that right to the pot as well. I'm gonna give it a nice stir. Make sure everything is nice and combined on there. Make a good stir. All right. Yeah, and I wish I had smell-o-vision. <laughs> <laughs> right, wouldn't that be great? You no. Know. Let it boil for a few minutes and then I just turn my heat down to simmer and then dinner will be ready for me at 5.30. So. Um, all right. Is there anything about this? All right, Miss Isabel, so far so good. I don't see any questions. So how about if we flop back over to Chris? Um, I'm ready. See what's I'm happening ready. there. All right. So that ready. looks amazing, Isabel. Now, are you going to, so you're gonna, yours is a long simmer. Throw it together quickly. 
but then you're still you're gonna simmer it a couple of hours, correct? Yes. Yep. Exactly. Okay. And while cool. it simmers, also um, it starts to thicken, and so the longer you let it simmer, um, the thicker it will get. Um, and it's it's really nice too because then that um, that raw tomato taste kind of softens a little bit. Um, it, it starts to thicken, so it makes a really really delicious chili. Um, so yeah, so I really hope that you guys make it and then you'll see how nice and beautiful and thick it looks once um, you have it done simmered for two, three hours. I can probably send a picture of this to Amy afterwards and she can send it all out to you if you guys are curious what it looks like. Um, Ooh, that would be great. Yeah, I can do that. And then I also, um, I usually garnish it with um, some plain Greek yogurt. That's great. It's a great substitute for sour cream, plus it adds a good protein. I usually put a little bit of shredded cheese on there. And then I also chop up some avocado and put that on there as well. It's so good. <laughs> so good. So I hope that you guys try it. <laughs> great. Do that and send us the picture. All right. It sounds fabulous. All right. Guess what, you guys? Our chili is done. So while you were gone, I did have to put the beans in because I checked our potatoes. I also burned my tongue in the process, so I'm glad you didn't see that and I had my camera off because I had this, this notion to see if there was any difference between the texture of the white sweet potato and the orange sweet potato. So I ate two chunks, I burned my tongue, and there's no difference. They're both done. So um, all we are going to do now, so I want to let you know I did add my black beans. I bought reduced sodium. As Isabel said, if you rinse beans, whether they're reduced sodium or not, you rinse out about 30%. These reduced sodium black beans, I rinsed them because I didn't want to also to make the chili kind of mucky and gray. But when I rinsed them, I got rid of 30% and it already was reduced by 50%. So, so that's what I put into our pot. I'm going to dish up a bowl of it and I'm going to talk about my garnishes. So I'm gonna garnish with fresh cilantro. I love cilantro, my husband hates it, so I always keep it on the side. And because this chili is sweet, and it is because of the sweet potatoes, there's no sugar in it. We didn't add any sugar, but it's sweet because sweet potatoes are sweet. Plus we added cinnamon, which tricks the brain into thinking, hey, something sweet's coming because we're so used to cinnamon being in uh, baked goods and things that do taste sweet. So it smells absolutely amazing in here. Um, so what I add for my garnishes is some cilantro, which kind of cuts the sweet, some plain Greek yogurt like Isabel, which I'm gonna, which I have here in this cup, whoops, and some lime, because I'm gonna cut it even more. I'm gonna add a little bit of acid. So if you hang on, I am going to dish up a bowl because I really want you to see how pretty it is. I'm gonna pull off just a little bit of my cilantro here and dice it, and then we're gonna. I can't, we can't give it a try. Now, normally in our in-person classes, Isabel and I have people sample things, but not now, right? Um, so I'm gonna dish that up and you guys are gonna be able to have a look at it. Uh, last thing I want to talk about before I do, if you like that smoky flavor, adding a canned chipotle pepper from the can takes it to a whole new level. It's gonna add some spice and it's gonna add some smoke because chipotle peppers are really dried smoked jalapenos that are then preserved in a chipotle sauce. So you would definitely increase the spice for those of you that like spice and you'd increase the smokiness. Um, I'm not gonna add it to mine this time, um, but I just wanted to share these with you. This is always a good little ingredient to have in your kitchen arsenal if you're trying to kind of elevate things and make them a little bit spicier. So let me dish up a quick bowl. I'm gonna turn my back on you for just a second and I'll show you how beautiful this is. Awesome sauce. So I think I have one more poll question while she's doing that. And so let's just see. So in your opinion, do you think um, that chili should contain a variety of beans? Yes or no? Now this one I'm making you commit to. <laughs> um, I, I can't eat beans because I'm allergic, so I'm a no in this crowd, in this group, but look at how beautiful that is. Wow. All right. So we're going to give it just another second, Chris, while you're doing oh, that. Oh, yeah. Take, 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 go ahead. And all right. I think we're about good. Here we go. We're going to end the poll. And it Sweet. looks like this is, this is a yes group. So 
Good job, because there's beans in both of these, so <laughs> we're happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Definitely. Um, okay, so this is, um, and I'll show you in a minute, because I, I always have to wait till my poll goes away, and sometimes they do automatically, and sometimes they don't. Um, and this one isn't for some reason. Hold on. Let me let me fix that for you. Is that better now? No. No? Okay, you're just stuck. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm stuck. Hang on one second. Uh, um, I know, it doesn't happen every time. Only once in a while. For those of you that use Zoom, um, we make each other co-hosts. So Isabel and Chris are my co-hosts. And then she'll see it on there um, longer than um, a participant will. So that's why she's still seeing it. But yeah. look at how beautiful. So, okay, so you can see, you guys, that the potatoes in here, the white and the sweet, are still formed. I wish I could turn tip my camera down, but I can't. Which, but they're done. They're the perfect texture in just 15 minutes. So you can see if I take one of these little guys and I push my fork on it, it's done. It's like a soft, it's like a soft boiled potato. If you want it a little bit mushier, let it go a little bit longer. If you like it a little bit firmer, cook it a little bit less. But this is done. And we're just going to quickly add, I would add a dollop of Greek yogurt, which I love. A squeeze of lime, love that. And then some fresh cilantro. And I have got just a beautiful, super healthy, which the light isn't doing it justice. You know, I wish we had these like professional photography lights because it's so colorful. You can see the orange and the white and the green. Um, really a beautiful, healthy, fifth, honestly, 15 minute chili. So I told it, uh, you all at the beginning, I was gonna give you the Instant Pot directions. We will put those on your revised recipe. But basically what's cool about this is you can dump every single ingredient, including the beans, in the Instant Pot, cook it at high pressure for three minutes, let it do a couple minute natural release and it's done. So if you have an Instant Pot, if you like Instant Pot cooking, this is a really great recipe. I want to tell people where I got the idea for this recipe is in a book that I find very useful. It's called Plant Based on a Budget, and the author is Tony Akimoto. I got this on Amazon. A lot of really good budget-based vegan and vegetarian recipes. Um, I changed it up. If you buy this book and you look at my recipe and you look at her recipe, you're going to say, what's Chris talking about? This isn't the same recipe um, because I think I added the cinnamon and some other tweaks to it. But this is a really great starting point and, and a well worth the 10, I think 10.99 I paid for it. So if you're trying to eat more plant-based, this is a really good start. Um, okay. Any quick, do we have any questions, Amy, or anything well, we else? Do. We need to come? Um, could you do that in a traditional pressure cooker? I don't, this is funny, so it's not funny, but I do not have a traditional pressure cooker. Um, I have a friend that uses her old fashioned pressure cooker that she got from her mom all the time. I don't see why not, but I don't know enough about it to send you off using your traditional pressure cooker. Um, I think they work the same way, but Instant Pots are quicker, I believe, or um, safer, but I, I don't know the answer to that because I don't have a pressure cooker. Do, does anybody on the call have one? Yeah, I don't know. I'm still traumatized by um, my grandma in the pressure cooker, you know, yeah. blowing the top off and things. So uh, I right. took a long time, longest time I resisted getting an Instapot, but I, I do love it. It is really nice. Um, I love this Instapot and it's so good for soups and stews. You mm -hmm. know, it really is. So, yes. um, well, good. Well, I, I hope you tried this one. Again, super colorful, great taste, a lot of flavors in there, really healthy. And again, for Isabel's, I think that's going to be awesome too. Isabel, do you want to close with any um, uh, recommendations for your recipe or anything else you wanted to add? Um, I think that's kind of um, all of these uh, that I said is just garnishing it with how you like your garnishes. Um, you know, I, I am not a fan of cilantro, but I know that Chris loves cilantro. So I'm sure that cilantro would taste great on this chili if you also like it. Otherwise, Avocado, a little bit of shredded cheese, some plain Greek yogurt, and it's absolutely, absolutely delicious. That sounds great. Um, I, last thing I want to, this is totally off topic, but I do want to say what Amy said about the tomato paste. That is really true. Obviously, 
so if you're always wondering like, why are they having me brown this tomato paste? It makes a huge difference to caramelize that tomato paste. Um, I have a, a cabbage recipe that is so easy that my daughter introduced us to actually, that you brown the tomato paste first in your cast iron skillet, then add your spices and ingredients. And to, to skip that, that browning step, just gives it a different flavor. So, so that, that's, um, that was a great tip, Amy. Thanks for sharing that. I remember the name of it. This is, you know, <laughs> this is the, the uh, advantages of getting a little older, like it comes to you three or four minutes later, but yeah. the Maillard reaction. Um, and that it basically is just a caramelization. And there you go. Yeah. That's what makes That's it taste great. great. So <laughs> somebody else was traumatized by a pressure cooker. Yay, we're in the same. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my mom was afraid of one. She never, my mom was a fabulous cook, but she never cooked in a pressure cooker once. She was afraid of them. So. Yeah. I used to back out of the kitchen, like, Grammy's got the pressure cooker again. Oh, boy. I was sure we were going to die. <laughs> All right. Well, it looks to me like Chris's uh, camera just gave out. Oh. So, um, yeah, no worries on that one. We are going to do this way. And I forgot to plug it in. Oh, no worries. So, all right. So on that note, I would like to take just a moment and thank everybody for joining us and um, remind you all that we will have um, updated recipes. Don't go crazy with these because they're missing a couple of things and the nutritional um, aspects or nutritional information as well. And hopefully a great picture from our friend Isabel. And for everyone that is part of the Area Agency Grand Pad program, you will be getting these uh, mailed to your house. So don't worry about the fact that they come out very tiny on your screens. Um, Miss Meg is going to print these recipes and send it. And for those of you that um, got the recipe ahead and cooked with us, thank you very much. I think that's super fun. I'm talking to you, Robin. <laughs> so <laughs> um, we appreciated you guys all being here. If you would like to know what the next class coming up is, because I don't have it pulled up in front of me. Um, Chris probably knows, but um, mm -hmm. <laughs> nope. I don't right. know. I'm, I'm thinking it's heart healthy. I think, or is it cauliflower? I can't remember. What it is. Cauliflower. Cauliflower is coming up. Yay. I'm so excited for that class. Um, then um, you can go ahead and sign up for that also at the campusforcreativeaging.org. Um, campusforcreativeaging.org. Click on the button that says classes and you can sign up for everything. Robin would like everyone to know that it's delicious. So she What did she make? What did she make the sweet potato? Um, I think she made the sweet potato. Yep. She made sweet. the sweet potato one. So. Oh, good. good. Must be because it's done. So <laughs> I know, Robin, my husband's probably going to be cooking a little ground meat on the side and adding it to his. Uh, that's yeah. what he did last time, but that's okay. Yeah. No, it's delicious. Right. Good. Well, thanks everybody for coming and we hope to see you at the next class and it's just really great connecting with you and having you here. So thank you for that. Yep. Thanks everyone. We'll see you next time.